I'm Dr. John Dewey, and I'm leading the worship today. Let's enter into a time of prayer. If you have a specific prayer request you'd like us to pray for, please send us a message to our Facebook page or send us a note to our email address. We would like to pray for you. So now let's pray together. Dear all loving and heavenly Father, we acknowledge there is none like you. You have created the universe and you have created us. We are thankful that you care about us so much that you'll take the time to hear our voices and listen to our concerns. Lord, we want to continue to lift up our friends and family members who have had various sicknesses and are going through various trials. We know you are a mighty God of miracles. Touch hearts, touch lives, and heal bodies. Heal those who have contracted the COVID virus, and please rid our land of this menace. Father, we pray for our national, state, and local leaders. Give them guidance and give them wisdom. Father, we ask for a change in us. Your word is clear that to heal our land, we must turn to you. Give to us, your people, a reawakening of interest and commitment to you. Help us to do your will and to be your kingdom on the earth. And Father, give a blessing to those that watch this service. May it help them to have an encounter with you. And may my words today touch lives that might not otherwise know you. Now, let's pray together the words that our Savior taught us. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come. Thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread. And forgive us our trespasses as we figure of those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever and ever. Amen. A reading from the book of Psalms. Give the king thy judgment, O God, and thy righteousness unto the king's son. He will judge thy people with righteousness and thy poor with justice. The mountains shall bring peace to the people and the hills in righteousness. He will judge the poor of the people. He will save the children of the needy and will break in pieces the oppressor. They shall fear thee while the sun endureth and so long as the moon throughout all generations. He will come down like rain upon the mown grass, as showers that water the earth. In his days shall the righteous flourish, and abundance of peace, till the moon be no more. He shall have dominion also from sea to sea, and from the river unto the ends of the earth. They that dwell in the wilderness shall bow before him, and his enemies shall lick the dust. The kings of Tarshish and the isle shall render tribute. The kings of Sheba and Seba shall offer gifts. Yea, all kings shall fall down before him. All nations shall serve him. For he will deliver the needy when he crieth, and the poor that hath no helper. He will have pity on the poor and needy, and the souls of the needy he will save. He will redeem their soul from oppression and violence, and precious will their blood be in his sight. Let us affirm together our common faith as found in the Apostles' Creed. I believe in God, the Father Almighty, the Creator of heaven and earth. I believe in Jesus Christ, His only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended into death, and on the third day He rose again. He ascended into heaven and sits on the right hand of God the Father Almighty. He will come again to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, 
the Holy Universal Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. A reading from the book of Matthew. After the birth of Jesus at Bethlehem in Judea, in the reign of King Herod, some astrologers from the east arrived in Jerusalem, asking, Where is the newborn king of the Jews? For we saw his star in the east, and have come to worship him. When King Herod heard of this, he was much troubled, and so too was all Jerusalem. He called together all the chief priests and teachers of the law in the nation, and questioned them as to where the Christ was to be born. At Bethlehem in Judea was their answer, for it is said in the prophet, And you, Bethlehem, in Judah's land, are in no way least among the chief cities of Judah, for out of you will come a ruler who will shepherd my people Israel. Then Herod secretly sent for the astrologers. He found out from them the time of the appearance of the star. Sending them to Bethlehem, he said, Go and make a careful search for the child. When you have found him, bring word back to me so that I too can go and worship him. The astrologers heard what the king had to say and then continued their journey. The star which they had seen in the east led them on until it reached and stood over the place where the child was. At the sight of the star they were filled with joy. Entering the house, they saw the child with his mother, Mary, and fell at his feet and worshipped him. Then they opened their treasure chests and offered to the child presents of gold, frankincense, and myrrh. But afterward, having been warned in a dream not to go back to Herod, they returned to their own country by another road. January 6th on the church's calendar is traditionally called Epiphany. An Epiphany, according to Merriam-Webster's, is an appearance or manifestation especially of a divine being, or a usually sudden manifestation or perception of the essential nature or meaning of something, or an intuitive grasp of reality through something, such as an event, usually simple and striking. And as we'll see, that these definitions do describe what we're about to talk about. Epiphany commemorates the visit of the Magi, or wise men, or as some modern versions have, astrologers, to see the infant Jesus, where they bring him gifts that signify that this baby is the awaited Messiah and King of the nation of Israel. Epiphany is announcing that in Jesus... God is manifested as a human on the earth. Here's some trivia about these magi or wise men. Now, we don't know exactly how many wise men arrived at the residence. Our Western tradition says three. I think that we culturally have accepted this number because there were three gifts. And this further gets confused in our minds because we grew up singing songs like We Three Kings and I Saw Three Ships. We also have stories like Ben-Hur that talks about three wise men and names them. And Henry Van Dyke's famous short story, The Story of the Other Wise Man, that emphasizes the three primary wise men and this one guy who is late. Uh, that story was later made into a movie called The Fourth Wise Man, starring Martin Sheen, and it's very good. I also find it interesting that in the Eastern Orthodox traditions, the number of wise men was 12. But I don't think that we can know for certain exactly how many wise men showed up for this event. But what we can guess for certain is that they probably did not present their gifts to a baby in a manger, you know, like on the Christmas card. So let's notice verse 11. 
it states that they entered the house. Not a stable, but house. We can also guess that some time had passed between Jesus' birth and this event, because later, Herod, when he orders the killing of the babies, it's for all the babies two years old and under. If you remember our passage, Herod talks to the wise men, and he wants to know when they first saw the star. I can just imagine he's doing some quick math, because he's trying to find out how old his rival was is supposed to be. But again, this is speculation. But what we are sure of is what gifts they brought. They brought gold, frankincense, and myrrh. Each of these items were later given specific interpretive values. And that is what I want to talk about today. The first gift was gold. Gold has been gold as long as there's been civilizations. Gold is one of our most valuable metals. It makes up jewelry, coins, and money in general. And it's usually what people have made idols out of. It's unfortunate, but true. In Exodus, the sinning Israelites created a golden calf to worship. In the book of Daniel, the king made a golden statue of himself that he ordered everyone to bow to and to worship. People who love money are said to have a god of gold. You see, gold is not always negative. Gold is a precious metal. It is very scarce, which is why it will always have value. In ancient times, gold made up the jewelry of kings and other high-ranking officials. Crowns were usually made of gold. So to present Jesus with gold, it may signify how the Magi viewed him as a king. Gold is a gift fit for a king. The second gift is frankincense. Frankincense is a rare aromatic fragrance or incense that's even in the name that comes from trees found in the Middle East. It is very expensive. Frankincense traditionally is identified as a fragrance for a divinity. The gift of frankincense identifies Jesus as being deity. It also indicates Jesus as being priestly. The incense in the Bible has a very unique function. As part of the temple, the priests were ordered to continually burn incense before the Lord. Now this is found in Exodus chapter 30, verses 7 and 8. Aaron shall burn incense of sweet spices on it every morning. When he tends the lamp, he shall burn it. When Aaron lights the lamps at evening, he shall burn it. A perpetual incense before Yahweh throughout your generations. Guess what this incense was made out of? Yep, you guessed it. Jump down to verse 37 in chapter 30, and we read this. Yahweh said to Moses, Take to yourself sweet spices, gum resin, sweet spices with pure frankincense. So why is this incense a big deal? It's because this is one of those things that God had them do physically that ultimately has a future spiritual reality. We know this because of some passages that are in the book of Revelation. In Revelation chapter 5 verse 8 it says, Now when he had taken the book, the four living creatures and the twenty-four elders fell down before the Lamb, each one having a harp, and golden bowls full of incense, which are the prayers of the saints. Revelation chapter 8, verse 3. Another angel came and stood over the altar, having a golden censer. A, a censer, by the way, is, is the thing that you burn incense in that kind of swings on a chain. Much incense was given to him. 
that he should add it to the prayers of all the saints on the golden altar which was before the throne. And as Revelation chapter 8 verse 4, the smoke of the incense with the prayers of all the saints went up before God out of the angel's hand. See, incense is a symbol of the prayers of the people that are given up to God. See, Jesus is involved because he is our mediator. Jesus holds the priestly office. It is because of him that we can go boldly to take our prayers before the throne of God. First Timothy chapter five verse or correction, first Timothy chapter two, verse five tells us, for there is one God and one mediator between God and men, the man Jesus Christ. The last gift is myrrh. Myrrh is another kind of fragrance or perfume. It's made from some particular kinds of bushes that are from Arabia and Ethiopia. The thing about myrrh is that it's more than just something that smells good. Myrrh has an antiseptic quality, so it uses an anointing oil, a medicine, and it's also used during embalming. The traditional explanation about why they gave the baby Jesus myrrh is that it signified, as something used for embalming, that Jesus was fully human and as part of humanity would someday suffer death. There's also a legend that the family kept this gift of myrrh to finally put it to use after Jesus was taken down from the cross and laid in the tomb. Well, what happened to these gifts? We really don't know. There's many stories and traditions. Um, the one that makes most sense to me is that the family used these to pay for their trip to Egypt and for the return trip back to Nazareth. But what is important here is not what happened to the gifts. What's important is that there were gifts. People from another country and from another culture traveled hundreds of miles for one purpose, to see this newborn king. Now that should impress us. We can look at our lives as believers and see how far we've come to see our king. See, this should inspire us to ask, what gift can we offer as we remember the birth of our king? Let us be dismissed with this blessing. Now to him who by the power at work within us is able to do far more abundantly than all that we ask or think, to him be glory in the church and in Christ Jesus to all generations forever and ever. Amen.